outstanding capital budgeting, ARR, payback period, and an opportunity cost, part three. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number, and also the source. You'll find a lot of good videos on McGraw Hill Irwin, the publisher's website, that have to do with accounting topics. And in fact, you can Google them and find them. We had left off talking about capital budgeting, which is companies making decisions on how to spend money that will return them cash and profits over the long term. And I had had an example pulled up, which is the Levi Strauss company that makes blue jeans and the decision about purchasing a sewing machine. And we're going to go back to that schedule here in just a minute. The question is, that we're going to go on to in capital budgeting is, I've got dollars in and out, inflows and outflows, but how much is going in and out? For example, I wrote a big check. How much cash will I receive each year as some sort of rate of return on that big check that I wrote? And a new topic, a new term is called accounting rate of return. And it's the ratio of the average cash inflow each year divided by the total cash outflow. If you go to our example, we had a situation here where at the beginning of the period, beginning of year zero, we write a check for $10,000 for a sewing machine. Over the next six years, we get in $2,000 a year. And we've already done some analysis on that. We said that the useful life is six years and that the accepted rate of return is 5%. And we use that to come up with some present values, <coughs> excuse me, in capital budgeting too. If we use the same data and go toward the bottom of the page, you'll see that our accounting rate of return is the $2,000 each year divided by the total check that we wrote, 10000 So accounting rate of return says that our rate of return is 20%. We're getting 20% of our money back each year over five years. But there's a couple points to keep in mind. First, that accounting rate of return does not take into account the total payments we're getting. The total payments we're getting are $2,000 over six years or $12,000 total. That's not in that ratio. Another thing that's not in the ratio is the present value of the total payments we get over six years. This happens to add up to a little over $10,000. In the second video, we learned that the present value is the $152, which is a positive number, the sum of the inflows and outflows, and that if that present value is positive, that's one piece of analysis that might lead you to make a purchase. So accounting rate of return is a good ratio to use, but it's not the end-all, be-all. So flipping back to PowerPoint for a minute, we also talked about payback period. We talked about that in the second video. And in fact, I'll go over to that calculation in video two. We said payback was the original investment divided by the annual cash inflows. It's the flip side of accounting rate of return over here, which has the cash outflow on the de denominator. Payback has it in the numerator. And we said that we get paid back over five years. There's a couple of issues with payback period. And the first is it ignores any cash flow you get after you're paid back. I got my cash back, and that's what's important. That's what payback means. When do I get my cash back? Not, am I going to make any cash over and beyond what I invested? Because in our example here, going back to capital budgeting three, you'll see that in terms of unadjusted dollars, we get $2,000 more back than we originally invested, $10,000. So that's a fallacy with payback period. It also ignores the time value of money because the payback period simply looks at dollars that are not adjusted for present value. This was $10,000 original investment divided by $2,000 back each year. So present value isn't counted either. So let's flip back to the PowerPoint. The time value of money issue is I'm getting dollars back, but what are those dollars I'm getting back worth? And specifically, 
what can I buy with the dollars I'm getting back? Another negative with accounting rate of return, it's not the perfect ratio, which is why we use a lot of different calculations to make a final decision. The question is, well, I'm getting money back and it's on average $2,000 a year, but am I getting more of it back at the front end, the early years, or at the back end? So accounting rate of return, AIR, ARR, ignores the timing of the cash flows. For example, I've set up a cash flow analysis here where we have uneven payments. We pay out the 10000 We get back an average of $2,000 a year, but the difference is, is that we get back fewer dollars in early years and more dollars back in later years. So the timing of the cash flows is important. The average annual cash flows are the same, but we get larger periods, larger payments in later years, which leads to a question. Can you manage your business when you're getting back smaller cash inflows in those early years? Can you make it getting back those smaller cash flows? In later years, you're fine, you're flush, you've got more cash, but in the early years, can you make it? That's the end of part three of our capital budgeting. You'll find part four on YouTube soon. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word, has a complete list of those videos on the YouTube channel or on our website for live tutoring and live chat sessions on a variety of topics. STL test, all one word, dot net is our website. Here's our email address and our phone number, and we will see you next time.